Hey everybody, uh, I wanted to give you an update on all of my fermenting craziness that I have going on here at the uh, pseudo homestead. So, let's see, I have nearly all the food groups represented. I've got fruits and vegetables, grains, dairy, and I've got a tea, which isn't really a food group, but whatever. The only thing that's missing is meat, and you can ferment meat, but I, I don't think that's something I'm going to try anytime soon. So let me uh, explain what I'm doing here. All right, let's start with the kefir. This is a symbiotic relationship between bacteria and yeast, which convert all the sugars, or lactose, in the milk into more digestible forms for us. I know it looks gross. This has been sitting out for a day, and I typically let mine sit out for two days because it just increases the microbial ecology of the product, and so uh, I want to get the, the, the most optimal product I can get. So what I've done with this is this kefir can be used to do any other sort of lactic acid fermentation. The thing you have to do is separate the whey from the curds and you can inoculate anything else with the whey. And you've got a lactic acid rich broth that's basically brewing with uh, bacteria. So what I have done is taken this kefir and inoculated my sourdough with it. Now I did this yesterday. First I soaked the wheat flour and then I added quite a few tablespoons of kefir and let that soak and then I added some more flour last night and created this dough or what they call the sponge I also added some flax seeds and chia seeds and some wheat berries and a little bit of honey because honey has amylase in it which is a um, enzyme that essentially digests starches so added that as well and let it sit and it rose it was about half his size so it's about ready to go you can see how airy it is and see that so I've got myself some sprouted grain sourdough bread that's going to be rich I also added a little bit of oat flour and coconut flour so we'll see how that works out now here I have a kombucha, which is essentially a tea uh, that is, um, there is the mother, as you can see in there. That is another symbiotic relationship between bacteria and yeast, which convert the sugar and the tea into a fermented product that contains lactic acid, acetic acid, and a little bit of alcohol. So that is a healthy fermented drink. Now let's go to the kraut that I made and the pickles. Uh, here you see the bubbles in here which is indicative of some serious microbial activity taking place. Now with this, since it's warmer than it was in the winter, well, you can see it bubbling up if I push it all this gas comes up. Look at that. Gas is a byproduct of the fermentation process. And here I've got some scum forming on the top. This is normal and it's nothing to be afraid of. All you have to do is just take it off and then you can get in there and, and get whatever you want. The thing that uh, is not good about this is you do not want this to infect the rest of the batch. So that's why it's important to have a barrier between the surface of the water and the contents below because once you get something like this going that mold is going to start consuming these uh, food particles and um, putrefy and you don't want putrefication. So that is why I do the barrier. Now since it is getting warmer out what I may do is relocate these batches to a cooler area of the house or even I don't know uh, put these in smaller containers and then stick them in the refrigerator 
I'm not sure exactly yet what I'm going to do. Uh, I've made a lot of it, obviously, you can see that. I'd say that's about nine gallons right there. Okay, on to the next project. Here is like an interesting brainchild. Uh, it's known as fruit enzyme, and I'm not even sure if I did this right, but I just kind of browsed and saw a couple of different articles and a couple of videos on YouTube, and I decided I'd give it a try. And so what I've essentially done is taken some pineapple, some papaya, lemons, and some ginger, and I layered them in here, and between each layer I put placed a, quite a bit of sugar or honey, and I alternated and then this is the result. All this juice is from the actual fruits. You're supposed to leave this for several weeks and then it turns into an enzyme rich product. I don't know if you can see but there's like bubbles coming up in there. It's like natural carbonation type of deal. And if, if I don't watch it what's going to happen is this is going to actually turn into alcohol. So I do, since I do not want alcohol I am going to experiment with some other things. You can see the bubbles here. Okay, uh, so part of my experimenting with other things so that I don't get alcohol is this here. Can you see those bubbles coming up? This is very active right now. What I have done here is I've taken the whey from my kefir and I've mixed it in with just a small amount of these. Look at the bubbles in there. And so the whey is rich in the microbes that are essentially consuming sugars. I mean, these little guys love sugar. They convert it to lactic acid and it becomes just digestively rich. So in my attempt to avoid the whole alcohol fermentation portion of it, I've added the kefir whey to this sugary stuff and then I'm hoping to get a product that's not going to have hardly any sugar content but it's going to provide me with that that kind of a sweet that fruity sort of taste in my diet that I maybe lack if I'm not eating a ton of sugar and this is essentially like the type of products that people um, are missing in their diets and why they are so inclined towards large amounts of sugar consumption and especially soda. This is naturally carbonated. This is fizzy. I mean, you can see it. You can just see it like fizzing all over the place. And when people don't have natural things like this in their diet, they're obviously going to crave soda and things like that. Maybe they don't even know that they have the option of drinking like a lacto-fermented drink, you know, or kombucha, which is naturally carbonated. And it, it provides you with that. There's like a component that's missing, I think, in our diets, and it's provided by lactic acid producing uh, food products. So that is my update on my um, lactic acid fermentation experimentation, and uh, I'm I love it. I think it's freaking fun, but I know there's like danger of food poisoning and stuff like that. So I'll I'll be careful and everything. I just uh. I love to try new things and if I don't try then I'm never going to know how to do this stuff so just thought I'd take you along for the ride. Alright, hope you guys are having a good day. Bye.